Okay, YouTubers, thanks for coming back. Uh, today, we are going to be doing something special, unboxing a large recent acquisition in the form of uh, the EFX uh, Darth Vader Limited Edition fiberglass helmet um, that I just recently picked up from a collector nearby and uh, road road weary to say the least because it was a four hour round trip but worth it without having to uh, worry about uh, shipping damages and all of that and to be able to inspect it before actually purchasing so it has been opened and displayed briefly and is back in the box so there's not much to the unboxing um, so I don't do too much unboxing videos that often but um, I'm going to be doing this one today because it's a little bit more special than some of the other things that I had uh, other than the Pro RS Prop Master pieces that showed up those are absolutely special um, but this one I've been waiting for for a while too this isn't quite the um, um, swimming in Vader's uh, weekend that I thought it was going to be. There was another piece that I'm waiting on um, that I was hoping would be based on uh, the um, commission um, uh, process, uh, how long it's taking to get done. Uh, that I was hoping it would have been done about now and timed out at the same time. I knew I was already going to meet my uh, collector for this. Uh, this weekend but it is not so so i'll be doing a uh a second unboxing or a second uh video at some point here with that whenever it does come in um so yeah i'm a little bit of the cat out of the bag this was supposed to be the weekend where i picked up this efx limited edition and hopefully i was waiting on a custom commission from somebody we know uh for a custom empire uh, Vader Helm, which, um, well, good things to those who wait. So I have no problem waiting for that. I was just hoping it would be able to something I could just kind of uh, do all in one weekend. So here we are, just kind of keep it brief because there's a lot more to talk about. The inside of the box is the top, if you guys haven't seen this before, the top um, uh, paper that just basically tells you what we're dealing with. I'm going to take that out here. Well, uh, printed cardboard, so to speak. Then we have the contents of the top box. Uh, over here is the the uh, stand, which, well, things are kind of turned around here, but uh, the stand, which has got a shiny base to it, which the um, plastic has been taken off, and that's okay. Uh, the uh, the um, post for the stand, the plaque for the display for the actual metal plaque, um, the paperwork, the certi certifications envelope. I did check them earlier. They're all in there. Um, and the plaque, which I will get into here, which we're looking at um, 219 out of 1,000. So not a bad run. A nice little short in the beginning of the run number. I'll definitely take that. And then the uh, clear uh, top for the uh, for the for the uh, top of the stand, so I'm just going to go ahead and pause this briefly to get this stuff out of there because I can't. I'll do this one-handed, and then we'll get to the contents beneath. Okay, the stand is together, um, and thanks for waiting and coming back. And I also decided to pull the paperwork out to look at it since we're unboxing. So the plaque is now in the plaque stand, which just as I can see, just kind of sits wherever you want to put it. It's got some um, ribbing underneath of it to keep it from sliding around. So I'll just put him back there for now. Uh, so we've got your typical EFX uh, registration card, which I don't usually fill them out, but that's okay. Um, ju you know, just a collection of EFX stickers to put on things. Um, Then the uh, proper replica program book, if you want to call it that, or whatever, where it uh, has a number of cool 
pictures of Vader and a little custom paint job picture. Um, let me sit you down here. Because you open up. Okay, I see this way. Um, it opens up into a trifold of the of the um, information and the authenticity and information on how the helmet was produced, which is cool. And now let's go ahead and put it back. And I will go ahead and get the paperwork back in its housing. And this stand is now going to go up above where I have now made room for him to go with my other EFX, uh, the PCR Vader I have that I did my A New Hope custom paint job to. Uh, my Black Series Vader, which won't be there too much longer, but that's where it is right now. So he's going to go up top here, and it might take a little doing to get him up there. So bear with me a few moments while I get that there, and I'll be back. Okay, thanks again for waiting. This is where things will go. The uh, stand is there, and barely covers underneath the overhang, which is fine. But it goes all the way back to the wall. So, uh, yeah, pretty big stand. And it's going to definitely give a tri-dent look to when uh, everything gets up here. And uh, that'll look pretty cool. So, now, with that being said, here are the internals. I took the top fiber or foam piece out. And uh, there's some tape there. Uh, there's nothing underneath it's just reflection here's the face there's some uh moisture packets and here's the dome um i will take the dome out first now i did already inspect this before uh i did end up purchasing it just you know as you would any collectible you don't want to just go sight on scene uh, and it was met with absolute approval um, so what we're seeing here is um, now that with the difference as you would have seen in my video from my PCR version uh, right away just from spending enough time with my PCR version uh, not even having to put them side by side which eventually I'll do I'm not doing that in this video I want to keep this one just as, as an introductory to the to this helmet but I will do a side-by-side -side comparison with them uh, very soon um, but immediately though you can tell how much more um, uh, texture on the surface of the dome there is you can feel where uh, the, the texture is coming up here and lumps over and flattens out and there's just a ton of it I mean you can look around and see how just hand packed the original um, cast was um, and how just I don't know what the best word to use is just how pocketed or just how um, malleated, malleated, malleated it looks it doesn't look you know really all that smooth but what you're seeing is a direct uh, result of the original well, we have to be correct here. This is cast from a helmet that was cast from the same mold used to make the screen used helmet. It was not from the screen used helmet, but it's the same lineage. So um, the, the mold that made the screen used helmet made the cast that made this helmet. So, um, Whereas, I, 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 if somebody knows the, what uh, the proper definition people want to have, what I believe is lineage is that you have your mold, and then whatever you cast from that mold is a first generation. And then if you make something off of that one, it's a second generation. So I would assume that because the mold that made the helmet um that made uh that they cast this from you're making a second generation so the mold makes the casting 
and then they made a helmet from that casting which is this helmet so as a second generation down we're not seeing a helmet made from that mold we're seeing a casting then a helmet see what i'm saying i hope you get it but that being said we're still we're still not missing hardly any of the surface detail of the original piece the uh, asymmetry is all there the surface area is all there now uh, one thing you can tell too is the uh, left side of the helmet is definitely angled upward more than the right side that's present on the EF on the uh, PCR version as well and a lot of this surface detailing you know the, the the uneven surface detailing a lot of it is there on the PCR right? and you can see little uh, the line in here is uneven it's kind of wobbly that's all amazingly there on the PCR version not in as quite much uh, obvious detail uh, as this is but it's there when you look at it it's there one of the things that um, that hides that on the EFX version or the, I keep saying EFX it's all EFX one of the things that hides that on the PCR version is even though they made the helmet or the dome um, more of a matte type of um, finish it was still a lot shinier than this and this autofocus is starting to piss me off um, but so the shininess of the plastic on that helmet kind of hides some of that detail um, little foam foam thingy uh, so there are definitely some things about it that um, yeah I'm trying to go slow enough to let the autofocus do its thing some definite details well I don't know if this is surface surface I'm going to go over and maybe clean this up a little more just gently with a with a damp uh, cloth and see if I can get some of that off there um, one of the other things too is the difference between the PCR and this is that the dome and the strip are all molded as one piece um, where the strip on the PCR is a added strip so you have the the dome and then a plastic strip added onto it uh, snapped it between them it holds them together uh, you can see very clearly on this one that that is not the case that is molded right in um, and that's making the big difference and of course you know the fiberglass inside and the mounting cup are all here um, so yeah a lot of the work that would have needed to have been done on the dome to make it like this I, w I just didn't feel it was worth it to really go through all that work uh, yeah being lazy so what uh, for the price point that the PCR was at and the type of uh, type of use it was aimed at um, and knowing that this was out here and I was going to be getting one of these eventually that solved that problem I didn't feel any need to have to go and do that to the PCR version when I knew I was getting it done with this version um, I'm not going to be trooping in these things either but the PCR version is definitely made for uh, and a lot of people who do, do troop in these uh, were it was a godsend to them because this dome is alone as heavy as the entire PCR helmet because uh, of the fiberglass it's crazy uh, so you can imagine what um, anybody who wears this or David Prowse even uh, wearing these full fiberglass helmets for long periods of time would have felt like um, and again with it being one whole mold there's no um, um, little dimple in here from the from the injection dimple that would have to have been filled in and um, mold over like I did to that one I did do that up there uh, not to uh, too much of an extent but I did kind of clear that up um, but yeah it's just once you see them once you once you look at it they're really close uh, EFX did a great job in making the PCR astoundingly astoundingly good um, 
for what it was and how much it costs and the way they did it, they really retained a lot that could have uh, either slipped by or they could have let slip by. They already let enough slip by, even in this limited and legend editions, which I'll talk about when we get the face out here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so here's the dome. Just a quick overview of it. I'm going to go ahead and pause us and get the face out and then uh, pick it back up. Okay, and we're back. So here is, let me go ahead and back him up a bit. Here is the mask for the uh, limited edition. And again, upon closer inspection um, and having spent some time with the PCR version, immediately you can tell the, the physical surface detail of this being... Uh, one whole contiguous casted piece, uh, not segmented plastic. Um, and the surface detail from the casting of the original mold is all present and very apparent where a lot of those bumps you see going all across there, none of that's in the PCR version. Um, the Even though the spray painted version uh, of paint on, the, on this limited edition as opposed to actual hand brushed paint that the legend edition has you can still see if i get the right light in here i don't know if that's going to do it but we'll see if I can get the window back there is causing this blue light to come in for some reason uh but you can still even see uh in the um surface area of the fiberglass some texturing that it kind of looks like hand um brushed or maybe during the sculpting process you know the the just the the texture of the detail from the sculpting tools left in the surface uh, you can see a lot more in the corners the uh, the material of the fiberglass of the original mold um, it's it's actually um, in the um, PCR version to us to an extent but not to this level um, so you're seeing a lot more of the original um, service version of the of the mold from the Rick Baker cast so uh, one thing that they did do I mean now getting to that they again the idealized paint job here this is all uh, spray painted although the correct color where the PCR was just a little darker it was a little bit darker um, gunmetal than this this is this one it looks a little bit better a little brighter um, more correct but it's spray painted so it's a lot more uh, um, fluid looking and, and smooth looking one benefit to that is you get to see a lot more of the surface detail of the of the uh, of the casting of the real face which I contemplated possibly doing what I did to my PCR to this one doing because I thankfully and humbly um, uh, really did uh, a good uh, service to the PCR uh, in hand painting it correctly adding all of the little uh, details and scruffs and this the sea scars and all that stuff <coughs> excuse me but um, they didn't do that here they left this more I hate to use the word idealized because it sounds like yeah, that's a cheesy way of getting out of things, but it's a more uh, appealing uh, uh, to, you know, it's a paint job, I would say, in the sense that it just looks to the eye a little more complete or a little more finished, and that's what they're going for, uh, and that's cool, and that's what I'm fine with. It. I really am, um, because I have my screen accurate, nasty, dirty looking. PCR version, and that's all right. Uh, but uh, having this for what it is, the direct lineage that it is, that the PCR is not, is why I got this. And to be honest with you, the um, limit or the Legend Edition, although they did take a few steps further into making it accurate, they did not go anywhere near the di the, the uh, distance they needed to um, to make it screen accurate. They added some more screen accuracy to it but it was still in my opinion a good uh 60 percent left on the helmet to make it screen accurate now uh, maybe not 60 i'll say 40 
So, um, they, but what they did do on this, thankfully, is the nose piece is very obviously hand painted. It's not sprayed, um, but it's not dirtied up like the original, like the real version should be. Uh, but they did leave dark weathering on this tusk, where this tusk they left it shiny, which is screen accurate. Um, the uh, mouthpiece the, in, in, in here, the actual lines, up and down lines in the mouthpiece uh, are a lot more wobbly and uh, not straight looking. There's a lot more uh, softness to the lines because that's the way it was originally cast. The PCR version, all of those plastic lines were just perfectly geometrically sharp, uh, straight and sharp lined. Uh, which is what they did to it. They they cleaned that up and made that look perfect. So I actually had to go in and well, I'm gonna take away from you in a little bit. Just come out and see if we can see this. I had to actually go in and dig into that to try to replicate that as much as I can. So this is if we're looking at the PCR version and everything that was done to it to kind of accurate paint job the face and what the limited edition doesn't have on a paint job level it more than makes up for it in accuracy. So I don't, don't want to fool around too much on this. I just want to kind of get a look up in the, into there and to kind of get a little um, comparison to this. But even just going from there to here now, you can just see how much better of a, of a casting this is, even though it's, um, uh, you know, what it is. Um, that made sense. Uh, the uh, lower vent down here, um, because of it being a full fiberglass cast, uh, is uh, these lines here that are not quite as hard, sharp as the PCR version. There's a slight rounded feel to them, which is, I would say, more uh, correct to having been cast from fiberglass or made in fiberglass. It wouldn't have been, especially back when they made this, it wouldn't have been as crisp and clean and sharp of a cutout as that one is. That one, it looks good, but it's definitely, you know, been straightened up and sharpened out. I actually had to smooth that out and sand that down a little bit on that one. So some blemishes and things like that in there that are all surface detail, not paint, which is, again, I just love it. I love the, um, the, uh, the just the look of the surface detail. Uh, the neck flange is a little bit better down here than the PCR, but they got it really close. Um, again, you're seeing just the other side of the surface uh, detail where the paint job went and uh, where the um, fiberglass um, kind of mashed up on itself in the mold, which is just the way it is. Um, so it looks really, really good. Um, the uh, amber lenses are... I think pretty much the same amber lenses as the PCR. There's no reason to really have to change them. They didn't have to make them different for any reason. But with the paint scheme the way it is, the amber color works off of it differently. So it makes it look a little bit better, I think. Uh, one other thing to note too is the, uh, br the nose bridge slots here um, on this are much deeper than on the PCR and uh, more, um, you know, again, this is the asymmetry is it doesn't they look more done by hand than than machined so there's a lot of things like that that are little things that you start noticing and picking up especially like where the piece goes together the nose pieces um a little more malformed uh, again just that's the overall view of, of it is very uh, busy surface area it's not smoothed out where they left a lot of it into the pcr but they did absolutely did um, sanitize it a bit and uh, that's okay it is what it is and, I'm, and I love it for what it is but if we're just talking apples and oranges here that's what, what we got so I'm going to be careful here by doing this uh, so we one thing though that this was a big selling point is the nice thick padded liner that's inside of it um, if you're going to wear it and troop in it which uh, I don't know if I would necessarily troop in it, but I'm sure I would. Maybe Halloween's coming and I'll just answer the door with my Vader helmet on and my black jeans and a t-shirt or something because I don't have a Vader suit, but I probably look silly, but hey, it's Halloween. So if I'm going to put it on, I'd rather have something padded because 
The PCR is not padded, and although I, I've got plenty of room for my big melon in there, it's not that comfortable. I mean, you got just, you know, a hard, open plastic area. So I'm sure this is uh, a little bit better. I have not put it on my face yet. I haven't sized these straps to it yet, but uh, it looks good. Now, one other thing the PCR does not have either, which I was, you know, glad to get in this, other than just having lining, um, the correct Vader helmet, let me see if I can get that to stop moving, uh, has this fine uh, mesh material behind the uh, front of the, of the opening where the PCR doesn't have that. And that fine mesh is absolutely visible in some shots in the movie. You can definitely see it. So another screen accuracy, thumbs up. Um, so yeah, and plus the uh, fiberglass is uh, a nice, thick, um, I'd say that's probably what, eighth inch, maybe, something. Nice and, uh, I don't know if you can hear that, nice and thick. Uh, good dense fiberglass, very well done. Um, so, then lastly, the um, way that they put this together is they've got the uh, the cup situation like the PCR does. Um, I'm not sure. I have to look closely, and maybe I'll do that later. But I'm not sure if there's a magnet in here or or a magnet in the dome, like the PCR do has. But there is a magnet under the dome um, that touches here somewhere on the uh, helmet and a lot of people who have done reviews on this have um, made the point of don't let the helmet slam down too hard on the or the dome on the helmet because it can end up putting a little dent in the uh, in the in the in the forehead there even though you know it's gonna be covered by the dome you still wouldn't see it um, but uh, but I did notice that so um, all right so I'm gonna get him all together here on the table first just to see that and then we'll get him up on the stand after that and finish this up. Thanks. Okay, so I did have one of my backup short stands to set him on because he was a little wobbly sitting by himself. So here he is all together. Um, again, um, just reiterating the points about it. Um, when you see him in person, it's a much different situation than you're seeing from even a high-res video and somewhat okay lighting uh, but when you get the dome on him it makes a huge difference uh, just from the overall look but he creates a, his own shadow over his face in a way that when you saw the face without the shadow you see all the gunmetal color and then you get the dome over top of it and the dome just kind of again he creates his own shadow and that's kind of a um, a um a fun little kind of way of looking at it as far as vader you know being who he is and his design actually reflects that about himself right but uh but yeah i mean by himself um and just kind of getting a, a good overview it's an absolutely stunning piece i have absolutely no uh, desire to paint this one. I didn't touch it. I already got my my PCR, you know, uh, done, and I, you know, that's just the way I'm keeping it. I like to have this for what it is, and I don't, uh, and I, and that's what I like about it. And again, their Legend Edition, they they drop the ball on it, man. They for the money that they're charging and the aftermarket value that it's at, for what you're getting with the Legend Edition, it's in my humble opinion, absolutely not worth it. Not at all. Because you're getting a hand-painted paint job, which any fool with a brush can do. Not really, but to the most part. And you're getting literally nothing more as far as an accurate um, detailing. And I've looked into it. You're getting nothing more than a dirtier nose and one little piece of the sea scar and some scratches over here that go there and there's a small dent looking piece up here uh, i think they may have added i don't know if they cleaned that out of this 
um, or it's supposed to be a dent or it's just a discoloration. I have it up on my PCR. I painted it in because there's no dent. But even if it is a dent and it's supposed to be there and they left the dent out of this one, I don't care. Uh, that... In the, in the scope of the amount of work and the amount of detail in the paint job to make it screen accurate, that is literally, in my opinion, 25% of the paint job that's necessary to make it screen accurate. All the little dings and all the little scuffs and all the little uh, wearing of the dark, you know, the dark uh, paint wearing around the neck flanges and so much more I could go over, which I already did go over in my PCR <coughs> uh, version video. Um, that the them calling it a legend edition uh, is just a ridiculous cash grab to say, hey, we're going to charge them five hundred dollars more and give them just about a twenty percent better paint job. Um, you know, no, Jack. If you're going to be spending money on something that's supposed to be touted as a legend. Edition, you got your limited edition and your legend edition. That thing better be dead on accurate when it's going out the door, not some, uh, um, you know, kind of passed off uh, thing that you're just saying because you can say that. So, um, thumbs down to EFX big time on that for me. But at the same time, uh, you know, when they do hit it right, they hit it right. And this limited edition, in my opinion, for a New Hope Vader is in a licensed, and I have to keep saying that because I know there are people out there who make these things, in a licensed collectible, this is as good as it's getting for um, any Vader out there, a Novos or anybody um, that I've seen before or after, even the Don Post uh, Deluxe Vader, which was now that I look back on it, as much as I would love to have it to be a partner to my Don Post Deluxe FET, as inaccurate as they are, they're a great little kind of funny Laurel and Hardy screen pair to put together. Um, don't make go. Don't, don't get me wrong. I got an absolute soft spot in my heart for the Don Post Deluxe line and FET. I would grab a Vader if I could, but it's not accurate. It's horribly far from accurate, um, and it looks kind of wonky, even more wonky than it should. So uh, the EFX Limited Edition fiberglass vader um is just topping it off that is on again a licensed collectible vader the best and most accurate vader that i'm thinking that would have been out there um and would ever be i don't think anybody else is really gonna probably do one i don't know if the star wars market's going to ever be another company out there that's going to produce another one i mean it's i don't know we'll see but for now this is it. This is the bomb, and um, I am absolutely going to love its position uh, in the in the pinnacle of my uh, Vader display. And uh, we'll see what happens when my uh, commission Vader comes in. We'll, we'll definitely um, do some uh, thorough information on that and see what that one's able to accomplish. Uh, for now, EFX limited edition, uh, limited edition Vader, you are it. And uh, I'm going to put you back up on the stand here and take a little shot of you there and round this up. Thanks, guys. See you in a bit. All right, guys. Here we go. And I ended up doing them side by side. Uh, I said I wasn't going to, but this is my side by side comparison. So here is the uh, EFX limited edition on its stand uh, in all its glory in between the two other Vaders. Here's the EFX PCR version as uh, repainted by moi. So if we do that, and then we do that. And I might be in the light, I'm not sure. Let me get underneath here. That, and that. I don't know, is that doing it? So, if I, I don't know if I can pull it back enough to get them both in, but and they're not on the same height and whatever so it's not really fair to do it that way but you can still definitely tell um some of the uh let me get in up here a little bit better you can definitely still tell uh the differences like i was saying before in 
some of the texturing on the dome uh, from just the casting on the limited not quite being there on the on the uh, PCR I mean the, the PCR being shinier but it's yeah, they, they left some of it in there I mean there is some there but it's not on the level of this one uh, by by a long stretch I'm not sure if that's coming across on camera or not they're still both to me uh, stunning pieces but the limited edition is by far the um, uh, the standout piece so if I get now I've got my original Don Post Vader down there and just for saying hi to everybody while we're here we got my RS Prop Masters uh, pieces here the uh, um, HDPE stunt helmet the Sand Trooper stunt or which is a stunt and the Empire stunt and my Black Series and my FETs the Don Post original Don Post Deluxe the Black Series repaint for Jedi the EFX and my lightsabers, we'll get that, and blah, blah, blah. And my Luke Skywalker helmet. All right, all the other helmets were given a, a shout out. But here, uh, again, um, what will be happening is this will be maintaining the, uh, the order until I get my commission Vader in, which will be taking the place of the Black Series, which is going to my brother because he helped actually build that and he loves it so he's getting that and that'll make room for my commission vader when it comes in so i will have like a vader trifecta which will be amazing hopefully when i get it together and uh there we have it so limited edition efx vader absolutely worth every penny and doesn't need to go any further and i'll talk to you all later have a good night keep it civil talk to you later